evil. Very evil. You and I were created for the sake of the humans, Kurumi. We can never be in a position to endanger the ones we were created to protect. You won't be in that position much longer. Okay, that was pretty pants. Can we do that again? <laughs> I kind of liked it. I kind of liked pants. the back end. It was all pants. Pants. Toilet. <laughs> <laughs> her with her Aussie terms. Her with her Aussie terms. It's English, actually. Is it? Oh, pants. Oh, it went pants. Pear-shaped. Like Pear-shaped when it all sort of slides down to the bottom. I'm stealing that one, too. Mm -hmm. uh, recording. <laughs> Less pants. Yeah. You and I were created for the sake of the humans, Kurumi. We can never be in a position to endanger the ones we were created to protect. You won't be in that position much longer. That was nice and evil. You can channel all that bad, mean <laughs> feelings that you have. Will it fit? I think they're good. So are we going to go on to... Yeah, um... the line tries you might. I think you're going to get smacked though right here. Plan your forward. <gasps> Well, is she not responding to that? I don't, yeah, I don't know if we want anything because you're so badass powerful. Exactly, I'm so super tough. <laughs> when you, you're coming back from the line, you're recoiling. Karumi's the one who does the oomph. I can see her underwear. <laughs> Panties wear! Oh, look at that! That is rude. Well, just in keeping with the character, we hope you're wearing red. <laughs> <laughs> or that I'm wearing any. I mean, just... <laughs> hey, little. I mean, this is the first time she landed a punch on you. Okay. Try as you might, you will never be able to defeat me. No matter what happens, <laughs> I will find you. I will I never vow. be taken. Well, I, I will vow. hunt you down, and I, I will never be taken prisoner. Your grunt, um, grunt, and then the line. It's pretty close. <clears throat> okay. Try as you might, and give me a little. Uh. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Recording. Try as you might. See, pants, you were wrong. <laughs> cool, doesn't it? I'm sorry? It needs more struggle, don't you think? More struggle, and you're, it's, it's grunt line. I mean, it's <clears throat> try as you might. It's that close. But the, um, so there's, what, two grunts? Because the first one seems to come on impact, where you can see my underwear. There? And then... <laughs> <laughs> No, I think we'll so it's like, we're not, that's, good. that's Karumi. We're not going to have you have one because you're so strong. Oh, I see. Okay. So we want that to be her, kind of like she's exerting more of the force. You're just kind of recoiling from the glass. <laughs> oh, I get it. Okay. I get it. I get it. I get it. Recording. If you think you can beat me, you're sadly mistaken. <laughs> I can't tell you anything about the character that I play. Not at this point. I have to keep it a secret. I think the artwork on, on this show is beautiful, and I think that's why manga has, you know, attracted the attention of people in, in Western cultures, because it's, it's, um, it's beautiful to look at, and it's surprising because you expect it to be for children, but it's not at all. So it's an interesting medium to play in. It's an interesting genre because you can, a bit like Farscape in a way, you can be cheeky and irreverent even though on the, on the surface it looks quite innocent. Um, but uh, I was also surprised the script was written in quite a, in such a way that I was able to visualize quite a lot of the storytelling so when I finally did see some of the images I was surprised by how close my imagination had taken me to what was you know, eventually put in front of me. Very cool character. Um, had to be enough to entice me to come all the way to Texas, Houston. Not that I needed an added incentive, but um, I don't think it would have been worth Stephen's while to, to bring me down here for a couple of lines. So um, it was a great part to play, and, um, and I think that's all I can tell you at this stage. Stephen directs the commentaries for um, the Farscape DVDs. So when he was in L.A., I think it must have been 
1999, maybe 2000. We were doing the season one commentaries, and Stephen gave me his card, and it said something about anime, animation work. And I said, do you do this regularly? And he said, yeah. And I said, well, if you ever get a part that you think would be good for me, let me know, because I'd love to do it. And he was so surprised. He was like, really? You really want to do it? And I was like, yeah, absolutely, sir, let me know. So 2001, I get an email several years down the track to tell me that they've found just the right part for me. So it was very cool. I did a little bit of work um, on a Farscape episode which involved some animation, a more traditional style of animation. And uh, that's what I'm more accustomed to, is doing the, the voice work first and then having them animate around you. Um, however, we did have some restrictions and some very specific guidelines because we were dealing with um, you know, Ben Browder, who's the star of Farscape, being you know, real in the scene and my character appearing as an animation around him. So that was technically quite difficult to do. Um, and this job has certainly presented some technical difficulties as well. I was surprised, I suppose I didn't really think it through, but I was surprised that all the animation had already been done because it's obviously made for the Japanese market first and so there was, you know, um, it's in Japanese and, and obviously over here for distribution to English-speaking countries uh, you get actors in to, to revoice in English. Uh, so I was surprised <laughs> by the word that uh, you guys used to describe the mouth moving, which is, you know, just follow the flaps. Um, and I didn't know what they were talking about until I started taping today, uh, recording today. But it's, um, it's a difficult and different process. On Farscape we, we do ADR, which is additional dialogue recording. It's quite a high percentage that we revoice in our dialogue. Um, and this is obviously all revoicing. But um, to someone, you know, hearing someone else's voice who's already done the performance before you, um, doing an American accent, um, and the particular character I'm playing, it's quite, um, I have to be quite dexterous, so it's, uh, it's been a good challenge. Very proud, very proud indeed, and very excited because Farscape's just started on air in Japan because we thought that as a show it would appeal, especially, you know, aesthetically to the Japanese audience because of their love of anime and of manga. So uh, to cross over and now do something which is quintessentially Japanese, um, and an opportunity to work with um, with Stephen again, of course. So it's um, it's been great. I'm v yeah, very happy. Mikhail, you're allowed to say my character's name now, and I'm allowed to. Um, it's a fantastic character. Stephen rang me and said, "Do you want to play a character where you can kick ass and you know be a really cool steel angel?" So. Um, I was very surprised though when I read the script because I, I didn't realise obviously that Mikhail would turn out to be a woman. When I first read the script I was really surprised that I would be playing someone who was male and female. But the, you know, that suits me. They always say scratch an actor, get an actress. It's always fun to play the villain because villains tend to be intelligent and calm and in control. and. Um, so it's less energetic in, you know, in terms of performing, you're not exerting so much energy, but it, it takes a different type of energy to remain controlled but allow enough modulation in the voice to get character through and to be able to tell the story without being completely you know, flatlined. Um, <laughs> just keep waiting for you know, someone to come into the recording booth and go, clear, because <laughs> my voice has just kind of become so like, you know, the quintessential evil person with the twirling moustache.